You already know that EMC testing is important to do, but where do you even begin? Hi everyone, my name is Matt and I'm an engineer here at Keysight and welcome to the ABCs of EMC. Emissions testing refers to the amount of electromagnetic energy that your device is emitting. It's important to ensure your device does not unintentionally interfere with neighboring devices. There are several compliance tests that your device will need to pass at a certified test facility before it can be brought to market. These EMC tests range from radiated and conducted emissions to power line surge and electrostatic discharge immunity. Today, we'll discuss two tests that are often failed by devices, conducted and radiated emissions. In the last episode, we defined EMC, or electromagnetic compatibility, and also talked about how important it is to be familiar with your local compliance standards. If you haven't checked it out already, I highly suggest doing so before watching this episode by clicking on the link in the card above or the link in the description below. Radiated emissions tests characterize unintentional electromagnetic energy released over the air. Basically, a radiated emissions test searches for signals broadcast by the DUT through the air. Since radiated emissions are one of the most frequently failed tests, it's imperative that you spend time measuring your device's radiated emissions. Conducted emissions tests, on the other hand, characterize unintentional electromagnetic energy release via conductive material, like cables. So with this kind of test, you're testing for electromagnetic disturbances that are conducted outside the device along its interconnecting cables like power, signal, or data cables. Conducted emissions tests focus on the unwanted signals generated through to the AC mains connection of a device. These emission sources can include, but are not limited to, switches, regulators, and low-frequency clocks. Before doing any sort of EMC testing, it's very important that you're familiar with your local compliance standards. In the last episode, we mentioned CISPR, or the International Special Committee on Radio Interference. CISPR standards only represent the foundation for emissions tests we'll be discussing in this ABCs of EMC series. CISPR is not representative of all EMC regulatory standards across the world, and therefore it is important to be familiar with your local standards. Products fall into different classifications, such as automotive, communication, and so forth, as seen on the table that is now on the screen. Once you understand your local compliance standards, you can conduct pre-compliance EMC tests accurately. For pre-compliance conducted emissions testing, you'll need an EMI receiver or spectrum analyzer with an EMC application, a transient limiter, and a line impedance stabilization network, or LISN. For pre-compliance radiated emissions testing, you'll need an EMI receiver or spectrum analyzer with an EMC application and a calibrated EMI antenna. Here's what our radiated emissions test setup looks like. You'll need a large area away from other electronic equipment to avoid electromagnetic interference that can disrupt your testing and lead to inaccurate results. Most commonly, your device will be placed at a distance of 3 meters away from the antenna, which is connected to the EMI receiver or spectrum analyzer outside the chamber. Stay tuned for the next episode of the ABCs of EMC series where we'll perform an EMC pre-compliance test on our device. In the meantime, to learn more about how you can do your own emissions testing, check out the Making Conducted and Radiated Emissions Test application note linked in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to our Keysight Labs channel and follow us on the RF Facebook page. Thanks for watching and see you next time.